show is brought to you by Coo Cullen Sportswear. Check out their website for great deals on teamwear on www.cucullensportswear.com or the Coo Cullen Sportswear Facebook page. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor Football Show. Delighted to be joined by Danny Hughes and Finian Hanley. Um, it's the first provincial final has arrived this weekend, and I suppose no better provincial final to get a kick started than Galway Mayo uh, on Sunday at half one. And Finian, I suppose it's very hard to know where this Galway team are going into the cup final. It is, Paul. Yeah, for sure. It's. Um, I think um, Paul Joyce was out during the week saying, sure, you know. Try, you know, trying to take the gloss off that really, and 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 um and just you know like let people know that if 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 we win well on Sunday, people will say we're fresh. If we lose, people will say we're undercooked and all that sort of stuff. So I think he put it right. You know that's that that's what will happen. It'll all it'll all come down to the result or what you know, you know what I think myself is. It's not ideal, obviously. Like, what, what, what good was a Sligo a match against Sligo going to be for Galway? Really, they were going to win well. They weren't going to earn a whole pile about themselves. Um, you know, could have picked up a couple of injuries. Could have got a run out to a few lads as well. But uh, they had two, two, two very good games against two Division One teams. You know, two of the top teams in the country. So that will stand to them. And normally, COVID aside, we would have a four-week break between between um, championship matches, you know, regularly. So, so they'll be used to that. They'll have put the heads down. They'll have tidied up all the injuries. Um, um, you know, are are Galway the team that lost to Mayo and lost to Dublin, or are they the team that you know we're flying at the start of the year? You know, we we'll know more about that on Sunday. You know, they're coming up against a very very strong hungry Mayo team uh, that looks fresh, and they'll have the impetus. I suppose they'll have a couple of games under their belts, and they've blooded a few guys. So. Uh, where Galway are at, it'll be interesting to see. I think, you know, given what happened a couple of weeks back, they'll be they'll be they'll be banging the walls and they'll be absolutely up for this game on Sunday. It's at home in Pear Stadium, so uh, you'll see a, a rampant, a, a ravenous Galway on Sunday, and and Porrick, Porrick won't let them go out by the way. And Danny, I suppose like they were comprehensively defeated in their last two league games, but is that no harm either because? Presumably, they would have learned a lot and been able to address their issues. Yeah, I suppose people would say the league performances and league results maybe have no burn on the championship. And and Calvin were the best exponents of that kind of theory when they put uh, put Monaghan away. I wouldn't say convincingly because it it was it was as much about it Monaghan imploding as it was about Calvin winning the game. But I would think that Galway. It might have checked the expectations there. Pre-COVID, Galway were going, re- you know, reasonably well. There was a wee bit of, Finney would probably tell you, there was a good, bit of a good feeling uh, around the place. A lot of people were talking about Galway as becoming contenders, which is early days in any any uh, manager's reign. And I don't know whether it's unhelpful for players to have that. I'm kind of thinking it was it was it's been a wee while since Galway. You know, I suppose since Pally Tally left and there was a bit of a dip after that, um, Kevin Walsh done, I thought Kevin Walsh done a really good job there. Um, and Galway probably weren't far away. And then there was a wee bit of a dip. Um, and now Joyce is in where he's going to be, uh, you would think, it's a bit of a total football plan that he would have taken. Now, Finian obviously is in the inside more than, more than I am. But I think learned very quickly that football has changed. It's changed since I played it. Finian was there longer playing at the back end than I was, but football has changed immeasurably. Um, the purest, and, and it's not in favour of the purest either. Um, so, whether you like it or not, there has to be a practicality to uh, the game now, and Galway are going to have to adapt to it. Um, and I think there's a halfway house maybe between what Tally and Walsh had and what Porig wants it in an ideal world. It probably is a halfway house there. But Galway this year uh, and next year uh, are going to have to learn pretty quickly, as all the teams are that in first year management, are going to have to learn really quickly because managers don't get the time that Mickey Hart gets or anybody like that. Jim Gavin, uh, you know, he's obviously unbelievably successful, but there's not a lot of patience in the game now. So they got to learn quickly. Um, Mayo... Uh, Mayo, I think, are, are up there with contenders, probably next to Dublin and Kerry 
Mayo or or were sorry the people's favourites for for being there or thereabouts for a semi final. So the the nature of the knockout competition this year, I think it's it's going to be difficult. Mayo had a really good test against Roscommon. Yes, they beat them well, but it's a great test. Coming in fresh with no test, so I would have thought it's unfortunate that Sligo didn't. I I thought for the sake of the competition, Sligo should have put fifteen players on the field, and I think Galway would have benefited from it, even if they had to beat them convincingly. It was still nice to get them on the field. But listen, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's winner takes all. But I think with Mayo with the games that they've had, with the tests that they have, I'd say they have to be favourites, um, and they're going to be very very hard to beat. Galway are still progressing. That's not to say that Galway couldn't have a great backdoor run next year when the competition reverts back to type. But uh, it could be a wee bit early. It could be a wee bit early for them. Yeah, and I suppose Danny mentioned a good point there about the players, Finian. And I suppose the big thing for this Galway team probably was early on in the early rounds of the league, they were probably going a bit too attacking. And then against Dublin, it was a bit defensive. I suppose the key this weekend will be getting the balance right. Yeah, it's, look, it's been thrown at us for, you know, you know, especially all my football in life uh, and before, I suppose, you know, we always talk about 98 and 2001 here and, and for years it was the stick to, 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 to beat us, you know, we, we we didn't adapt, I think Galway were one of the last teams to adapt, to, you know, really until Kevin came in, we were still kind of playing that that football and anything that was any anyways different was frowned upon down here and it was just not accepted from supporters, uh, even county board officials. It just wasn't accepted. If you were bringing bodies back or trying defensive structures, you know, it was, you know, people were closing their eyes coming to train and to watch it or coming to matches. They didn't want to know about it. You know, Kevin came in that came in and obviously he had a you know a massive profile and he, he's a legend in Galway. So he, he you know he got the time to do that. Um, and obviously with that brought results, you know, we went, I suppose at the end, we went very, very, de very defensive and uh, you know, it worked and like the balance, you know, that's been, that's been going on for years. And I think what happened after Kevin was all the supporters and all the, you know, county, you know, everybody just said, look, we want to revert back to the type, the Galway type, which is, you know, everyone's pushing up, everyone, not pushing up, you know, I don't like using those words, but orthodox 15, you follow your man, you mark your man, your responsibility is with your own man and your responsibility is, your, you know, a lot of it's with yourself, you know, whereas, you know, Kevin and, and we'd say, you know, that defensive style that we had was very team based. Um, um, so, so look, you're right, you know, the balance between what PJ did at the start of this year, you know, and, and look, this year, you know, if, do we, are we papering over a bit? Are we better? I, I don't know, because Monaghan should have beaten Galway the first day in the league in Pierce Stadium. They were the better team, uh, lost narrowly. Galway should have beaten Kerry in the league, lost narrowly. Donegal could have beaten Galway. Like, it was fine margins, and, and sometimes in the league, you know, uh, you can get a bounce from a new manager. So, we'll know this weekend where Galway are really at um, under Boric. Um, I don't think we're as bad as, obviously, we're not as bad as, as we were a couple of weeks ago against Mayo and, and Dublin. But I think, you know, we're, we're, we're growing all the time. He's trying to bring his own stamp on it. Um, our goal, we're going to go defensive this this week. I suppose one thing Kevin Kevin Walsh did, and, and I know Porrick's not going to, you know, probably won't pick up the phone to Kevin, but uh, you could do worse than pick up the phone to Kevin Walsh this week. Kevin Walsh knew how to beat Mayo. Um, he did it numerous times. He knew that Mayo have a running game from from five, six, and seven. Uh, and and what Kevin did over the years was he sucked the runners into certain pockets of defense of of D as he called it, and and turned them over. You know, he showed them where to go. They went into it time and time again. And you know, you know Mayo struggled, and, and obviously, you know, after coming off the back of Mayo beating us for a number of years Kevin changed that and you know Mayo couldn't get a win over Kevin ever because he just knew how to beat Mayo so you know if Porrick was inclined he, he might give a a, a, a whatsapp to, to Kevin this week and just try and you know share a few few thoughts on it um, but look PJ PJ knows the game himself he'll, he'll have learned from the game in tune a couple of weeks back it's on Empire Stadium elements are huge here obviously it's it's, it's pouring rain here today. Like it's <laughs> absolutely bucketing. I know it's like up and down, Danny, but no, it's, it's absolutely. It's lashing, yeah, it's lashing. It's you know, and that are we going to get our, our customary wind uh, or our westerly gale on on our usual westerly gale on Sunday as well? So then you're into a game of two halves. Um, it's dark, no supporters. It could be an absolute lottery. So you won't be betting on the game. It could be anyone's game. Um, I presume the. 
you know, you'd give Mayo a bit of, of, of an edge because of their, their running game might be better and into that whinge, uh, you know, the team that can run the ball with your Paddy Durkins and your Rushy Mullins and these guys, you know, really good, strong, powerful runners at the ball uh, and they mightn't kick as much. You know, they've been kicking a lot, but, you know, Sunday into the Gale, I don't see too many teams kicking kicking long ball in. So, look, Galway will have to get the balance right. I don't think we're going to leave ourselves exposed with Killian and Aiden inside, you know, uh, you know, it'd be it'd be crazy to leave Aiden in there or one v one. Um, I think so. So I think look, he'll pick the team accordingly. Uh, hopefully, he'll get his matchups right. Um, but you won't see the same Galway. You know, to, to your point, you won't see the same but, Galway as you saw a couple of weeks ago. This, the interesting thing is that the uh, for Galway and and you know we all know what Mayo have. We've, we've all seen them over this last number of years. So you sort of know what Mayo are going to take to the table. But Galway, they've verbally been for me. One of the best players in the country, Shane Walsh, uh, for me, skill set, just ability, you know, two feet. I just think Shane Walsh is probably, for me, top two, three players in the country. So you have that. Where do you play him? Full forward, centre half forward. Where's he gonna? Where's he gonna impact the game? Where's he gonna have the most impact? Um. So and Comer, I'm not sure where Comer's gonna sit, but again, you have a racking ball there, the, a man that can change a game with his sheer strength and ability to go direct. So I think uh, there's a couple of great uh, conundrums in there for Joyce. Um, but utilising those two guys is going to be is going to be key and making sure you isolate them as much as they can. And if you can't do that, uh, like Finian said, where Kevin Walsh got the best out of those two guys at certain times in certain games, um, I think all we could well beat Mayo. Mayo were, for no, no doubt, their favourites, but... You know, Galway have definitely reason for, for optimism over the next one or two or three years for me. And it's not all about this year, but it's about building towards next year and the year after. Yeah. And Mayo's backs, Danny, um, Paddy Derrick and sensational performance last week, almost yeah. got the wing back, Oshie Mullen. Matthew Ryan at midfield, he's just a nightmare to make because he never stops running. But um, is it really key for Galway? Because like, that will stop... Mayo's running game if you can stop them players. Of course it is. And the way the game has come, you know, the, ideally now in today's game, I know Finian played full back and was a real uh, class kind of presence there at full back. Um, but at half back, if, ideally if you had to go and play, if any player had to go now and play anywhere, it would be in the half back line or the half forward line where you get on the ball, you get to see up the field, you're dropping back anyway. And you're coming on in your quarterback, it's more or less a quarterback and row where you have that ability to go up the field, punch holes and stuff like that. So so the way the game has gone, I would give you nothing for playing inside as a full forward or even playing full back where you're constantly covering and, and stuff like that. So it is where the action is at half back and Mayo have one of the best half backs um right throughout and even and even going into the half forward line, a very, very hard working half forward line. But Mayo are going to have to the best form I think of defence at that at that stage. They played half forward for a long time. Is if you can ask questions of the half back. There was um, young Davy played for Sligo. Uh, Finian, you would have seen him. Uh, what's the mm. guy's first name? And he was an attacking half back nightmare at times to mark Johnny, Johnny Davy. Yeah. Johnny Davy, and he would have constantly, constantly been putting you on the back foot and going into the fence. Mm. But my my I always felt that the best thing to do there was to put him on the back foot all the time. So ask the questions of him early on. So that might take, you might be taking a chance the odd time if he does go, what you're doing is you're on your feet and you're on your toes ready to go in the odd direction as quickly as you can, even if you don't get the ball. But it's to ask that question. And what the Galway halfbacks are going to have, or half forwards are going to have to ask the question of the Mayo halfback line. But if you don't do that, what you're doing is you're inviting Mayo in onto you and the way they are, the experience that they have, they will do damage there. Um, they will certainly do damage going forward. And it's not even the first, you know, not direct. They might get on the end of a score, but they'll, they'll, be the, they'll be the supplementary pass or they'll punch that hole that'll create that, that overlap and run. So um, Galway will really need to ask questions of the Mayo half back line going the other direction. And I think if they can do that, that they have in the past, then they can certainly uh, beat Mayo. And 8 to 15 for Galway, Finian. It's very hard to know who's going to play there. Ronan Stevens injured, John Mayer is there, Tom Flynn, Keane Darcy, Matches Barrett. And then in forwards, you'd, up front, you'd only really say 
that Shane Walsh and Paul Conroy would be two set forwards. Comer's injured. And you really don't know who else could be there. Not a clue, yeah. So I suppose from, from down here, if you're if you're looking for news, we have not. <laughs> because uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a lottery. No one can no one can predict what 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 what's going to happen or what the team's going to be because it's it's you know like like obviously there's going to be changes from the Mayo and Dublin games. You know, obviously we, we we're beating in both those. So there's going to be guys coming in. Are we going to mark? Are we going to pick half forwards to control the Mayo's strongest line? You know, are we going to pick? Are we going to pick forwards that are going to run with the, the likes of Durkin and these these guys? So it's 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 interesting. No one really has a clue, as you say. Midfield is an absolute. You know, we're not going well there. Um, you know, who's 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 going to be picked there? Ronan Steed is injured. We have like Tom playing obviously for experience. We'll have to play, and then you're into Jars. You know, who's played the last couple of games? So Joyce. Joy seems to have something for him, um, and then you've got you know likes of matches Barrett, who's young, very young, you know, only a twenty-one year old, you know, going in against you know those guys, it'll be tough on him as well. So it's hard. Look, it's hard to know up front. You know, Damos had that injury um, that he picked up against Mayo. Will he feature? Well, hopefully he will. At some stage, will he start? Is he able for seventy? I don't know. It'd be it'd be miraculous, really, to get back from a hamstring injury. You know, like you, you know yourself, they're just. And then there's a risk of going. Like the last thing he wants is to start the game and for it to go. I think you know if we can stay the course till 50, 60, and then you're bringing on Damien with the wind, you're you're in you're in really good shape. So, um, up front, Shane obviously is look and and, and Paul's in in the form of his life as well. So what you do around that, I think Ian Burke will play. Um, to, to ask questions from a movement point of view, and then you, then then you're looking at the likes of the workhorses, really the likes of Eamon Brannigan, fitness levels, um, you know, and, and after that, then it's 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 a lottery, it's a pick of of, of of God knows how many. Paul Kelly, young Paul Kelly played. Um, I know Carl Sweeney, young Carl Sweeney, who's who's my own club man, who's a super super talent. Um, you know, probably the best talent we've had in a long time. He's he's a wing back, but. Um, he seems to be in training there as well. So can he feature? I don't know, but uh, but but outside of the obvious, you know, it's it's it's, it's a pure lottery. I think I think a, a big point for Sunday is you're going to get limited chances because of conditions and everything like that. And Porrick will want the guys who are taking scores, you know, share, you know, have the eye in for score because when you get the chance, you, you know, you won't get easy chances on Sunday to take scores, you know. And I suppose where Mayo have failed. At times in the past, is you know when it came to taking those scores, they would missed them. So both teams will want their high percentages. They mightn't get many opportunities because it's going to be a war of attrition out the middle with with the, with the weather and everything like that. So once you get a chance of a score, you know you don't want to be missing one or two early because if you do, confidence is down and they're crucial chances. So Park will want the guys with the eye in, the Paul Conroy's, the Shane Walters, who once they get a chance at goal. They'll stick one over the bar um, early on, and Mayo will want the same. So you know the percentages have to be high because the 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 the, the chances from scoreable scoreable locations on the pitch will be um, few and far between. Yeah, and I suppose Danny Aidan O'Shea is probably going to be a man talked about so much in the Galway camp um, this weekend. But is it just one man on him and then another man underneath him? So when the breaking ball comes, he picks it up. Is that Galway's best plan? Aidan O'Shea, uh, like, listen, I, I felt for a long, long time that Aidan O'Shea gets, he just gets so much, you know, he can't really put a foot wrong or Aidan O'Shea gets hammered. Aidan O'Shea has been fantastic, one of the top, top players for this last 10 years, a real driving force for MAO, can ask so many questions at full forward midfield, great carry of the ball, so strong, really good in the tackle as well that a lot of people don't give him credit for. I think Aidan O'Shea, um, He's a very, very difficult man to man mark um, if because of his sheer size and physicality and ability as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I suppose for me, you sort of have to, who, who will be able, in, in Galway, who, who's, Finian will be able to tell you who, who's best to pick him up. And I'm sure he picked him up on a few occasions over the years and it was a, you know, Finian would have the size and the physicality for Aiden. But even then, you know, he's just still so hard to dispossess. So, you know, there's no point there's no point in going out there and, and I think go, you stick one man on Aidan O'Shea and you allow them to battle it out. 
Um, I think changing men time and time again can only cause confusion if somebody fails to pick him up on a late run or something else. He can, you know, his momentum, his strength will carry him through and, and he'll put one in the back of the net. Um, again, uh, for me, it's a man marking job and as somebody that can match him physically anyway. Um, and he does get around the field a lot as well. So I think there's players in there that can do that in Galway. But uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a great advocate of changing men all the time because I think in the midst of an inter county match, yes, we don't have the crowds, um, but I think players can switch off because of the amount of space and other players that are available in the current climate and the current way the teams play. So I would be an advocate of one man more in Morganham, and that player is going to have to match him um, physically, which there isn't that many can do that. So Finian may get the boots and the shorts back on, and maybe. Uh, get back out and maybe get in the bottle. <laughs> I, 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 I was that soldier, and uh, as you say, Danny, I, I've had a few uh, battles with, with Aiden over the years. Um, you know, particularly the first year, I think the first year he played full forward, I marked him in the stadium, and like, sure, I was, you know, in absolute heat the following day. He was just battered straight mm-hmm. through me, um, and, and you know, absolutely a, a nightmare time just power physical power you know trying to mark them one-on-one like is you know you know is, is is a nightmare for anyone and i think you've seen that after that he went on he scored he he, he did the same in the Connacht final uh he played johnny they played johnny gall johnny gall had their, their their sweeper system in place and he battered them out of the way as well you know big mcgee and the boys you know he he, he should have had a penalty in the semi-final in the first mm-hmm. 10 minutes uh keen o'sullivan philly mcmahon were on him and they were dragging him you know i think and then the following year, then Galway, you know, we started setting up more defensive, and teams started set up more defensive. So Aiden's days in full forward, you know, you know, in in space were gone. But I think what's happened now is there was a couple of years of that. So Aiden moved back out to midfield, and he's been winning the frees out in midfield. He's been winning. 10, 15 frees a game. It's just not close enough for scores. Now he's in there winning frees and every time he, he's fouled, Killian puts it over the bar. So um, what has happened is we've football has moved a little bit away from the defensive, a little bit, um, and people are trying to open up and play a bit more. So that's given Aiden the space that he had back in 15 when he threw us all out of the way for fun. Um, so, so do you leave him one-on-one? I, I don't think so. Do you, you know, I, I get your point, Danny, where you're saying like is he you know you don't want to be switching men you want someone dogging them but you're going to have to have someone helping that person cutting off mm. angles cutting off the mm. space you know making sure that when the kicker the German o'connor or or, or maddie Matt, you know maddie rowan whoever has the ball and they're looking in kevin mclaughlin particularly kevin always looks for aiden outside of the left cross field ball so you want to quit with, with your sweeper or your extra and you want to cut off that space uh, and make kevin kick it somewhere where you're giving the guy marking aiden a bit of a chance to get a hat. And there'll be room for that on Sunday because it'll be wet and it'll be, you know, poor cornerbacks like myself. It'll be mm-hmm. days for us to, to, to throw the body at it or whatever and try and spoil the, the, the footballers, you know. So look, look, Aiden, Aiden, people, people, opinions on Aiden. I know, you know, I got to play with and against him. Um, I actually roomed, roomed with him in Australia in 2014 and the man is a freak for training. You know, I've, I've never seen anyone train, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, gym, gym, gym. You know, minds himself, trains really hard. So look, you know, he he is where he is because you know he he's where he deserves to be for the work he's put in. But uh, he's going to be a handful. Who's going to mark him? We had Sean Andy on him in tune. Um, now Sean was Sean Andy was left quite isolated that day, and obviously Aiden was 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 running a muck. Um, Sean Mulcairn is a slighter. He's more of a uh, a footballing fullback. You know, hand in, but he's 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 a lot lighter than than Sean Andy. So. What Porrick will do, I don't know. Porrick will go left field. He might put a Garrett Bradshaw on there um, or, or someone like that, someone who can match him physically and then get guys in around him. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd probably put Sean Mulcairn in there because he seems to be the form player. Uh, very, very good fullback. Um, you know, very, very good. So, uh, and on a wet day, getting a hand in and spoiling, he'd be very good at that. You know, I would go with him and, and a bit of help around him in a Garrett Bradshaw or Gary O'Donnell, someone who's cute and strong and and street wide who can who can match Aiden for for the smart. So um, look, it's going to be interesting and, and how the deal with Aiden O'Shea will, will go a long way to how we go in the game. Yeah, and Danny, the press really looks to be back. Like um, in action, it was very impressive against Ross Common. They really targeted Colin Lavin, 
But I suppose they're not really winning the kick out clean at midfield, but any break, they're winning it. And they're probably really going to target the press again this weekend. I, I would think so. Listen, it, it's been working. Uh, what they've done has worked. Um, yes, it was a bit of a... Well, Tyrone, you know, beat them in the league. Was, I would say it was a bit of a freak result where you know, a couple of mistakes that were made that give Tyrone goals. Um, and I think Tyrone were... Uh, Overly offensive, <laughs> for in comparison to what the what they normally are. But this Mayo have have seen they've got that balance. I'd say Mayo or where Galway would probably want to be in a, probably a season or two seasons where they have, they have that balance really well struck. And people forget how close they were this last couple of years to winning an All Ireland against verbally the best team that we've seen since well seen in my in my time um, uh, alive. Never mind. Going back to the eighties and eighties, uh, um, the early eighties, seventies with uh, with Dublin and Kerry, those great teams. So you know, Mayo were what one kick of the ball, um, a, a, a fist pass, a, a post away from winning All Ireland on a couple of occasions. I think we probably at times are, you know, forget the fact that Mayo are All Ireland contenders and have been this last five or six years. So, um. They have that balance right. They have a good manager in James Horn. He's pretty consistent. There's never any here. You never hear of any bad feeling within the camp or people walking away from the panel. So again, it's a good indication of of uh, a good feeling within their camp uh, when James is there. So um, I don't see Mayo reinventing the wheel or their wheel. Um, and I think they will do exactly what they've been doing this last couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I can't see I can't see big big changes. Um, sorry, my phone's going off. Um, sorry, I can't see big changes on what what uh, you know, what Mayo have been doing. So you know, I think it'll be very close. And is it really Mayo's? I suppose experience and probably a bit further down the line than Goy that could get them over the line this weekend. Um. Yeah, yeah, I suppose a lot of people have been saying the opposite. I suppose a lot of people are saying about Mayo blooding a lot of players. Um, um, you know, they've, they've had nine, is it nine debutants or something since the championship started in two games. So, you know, Oshin Mullen, Tommy Conroy, who's, who seems like a find. Um, you know, don't know who these guys like like they come in, but this is a big one for them now on Sunday. You know, this is a you know there'll be no crowd there, so maybe that 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 will help. But uh, uh, you know, whatever whatever happens is is, is a big day in anyone's uh, football and life. So um, you know those young guys, how they react to that, the nerves will creep in. Um, again, Galway are going to be absolutely up for this game on Sunday. I have no I have no doubt. About we, we, I suppose we owe them one from from a couple of weeks ago, so that's going to give us a huge, huge. It, look, Mayo do have experience. Killian's back playing brilliant football. Is you know everything about Killian O'Connor at the minute is is dangerous from from his pressing, his tackling, his 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 general passing. Uh, you know he, he, his variety of play is excellent. Minute obviously Aiden is there. Uh, and then they've got a bench full of experience as well with Keith and uh, Keith Higgins and these guys, you know, to come in. Um, like like James Carr and Darren Cohn were the two main men last year, the two best players they had. And they can't make the team this year. So, look, James Horn isn't stupid. He didn't go back in there. Uh, as we said last week, he didn't go back in there thinking, I'm sure I'm building for a few years. He knew what he had. Um, as you're fairly certain that that the players are there, he knew what was coming from the Westport and seeing underage stuff as well. So look, they have they have good experience, but look, we have experience as well. We we have huge experience as well. Concern at the minute, we don't know who who's going to be the goalie on Sunday. Uh, you know, Conor Gleeson was Bernie was there the last week uh, against Dublin. So you know, you know. On, Zoom Galway on kickouts and stuff over the last couple of weeks with that goalie, whoever that's going to be. So uh, the biggest issue we have is, you know, we don't really know our best fifteen, but uh, Mayo seem to be more settled. They've got huge is, experience coming off the bench as well. So is Jimmy McGinnis still involved then, or is he? Uh, 
I, no, I think that was a one-off, Danny. I think that was a one-off. Uh, I, I know himself in Park or Mates. Um, he was down doing a session um, uh, all along, and, and, and he obviously got down for one session, but I don't think there was anything. Obviously, when it came out into the media, it looked like more than it was, but I don't think he's, he's still involved, to be honest. Um, um, it, like, it, it'd be, you know, it's... It's tight time, as not heard, and I, I presume we would have got some inkling of it if he was, but uh, mm. uh, I don't think so. I think I think I think what Porrick and John Cannon and and Divo they'll, they'll, they'll get the best fifteen hopefully on the pitch, you know, and leave a few in reserve, you know, hopefully we, you know, if we have Damien in reserve and 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 one or two more, Robert Finnerty is he going to start? You know, we need a few guys so we so have experience wise. Uh, as you say, Paul, they're, 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 they have a lot of experience. They still have the guys that have worn the shirt for the last 10 or 15 years there as well. So if there's crucial ball behind or to, to win a free at the end, they, they have guys to do that. So look, it's a little bit in their favour because of their form, but you know, a lot of it's going to go out, out the window on Sunday, given the, given the <laughs> weather. It's at home and Galway and, and, and we'll, we'll hope yeah, we'll be able to... <laughs> Uh, give us a bit of joy, you know, give us something to, something to shout about. Moving on to Ulster, um, Donny Gawler, man, comes on Saturday. Um, for me, anyways, Donny, I give her a huge chance in this game, um, you'd have to think. Paul, listen, may I have a column here with the paper, uh, the Irish News in the North there, and I've, I, I haven't used any logic when I've picked that Armagh can beat Donegal. I haven't, there's, it's not based on any kind of evidence. It's not based on anything, any logical equation. I just think that given the year the Senate, given the carry have been, I thought that was a total shock that carry were, were, were beaten by Cork. You know, I, I thought, I honestly thought that this could have been Kerry's team to beat Dublin, this Dublin team, given the change in management in Dublin, etc. So I just thought that Kerry, we're building nicely a couple of class forwards and, and obviously Cork took them out. Um, again, as much to do with, with Kerry's system imploding or, you know, being overly cautious as, as much as, as was Cork winning. But um, I, I think Armagh can do it. I really believe that they've a really strong midfield. They have a forward line of forwards and finishers that can ask more questions of the Donegal's defence than, than Throne were allowed to. Throne, no doubt, Conor McKenna, when he came back from uh, staying in rules, you could see um, that he hadn't been infected with the kind of, I suppose, the defensive mindset that a lot of forwards and thrown have have taken to the table this last number of years. Conor McKenna was very direct. And on the back of that, he was getting scores. And the same with Peter Callum Sondara. Again, he had only been into the squad. Again, natural finisher. So it meant that, you know, the defensive side of it, while, yes, I'm sure they worked on it, but they were scoring on the back of the, their natural instinct to score as forwards. So you've got Clark, Supi Campbell, Rory Grugan, uh, you've got the two O'Neill lads in Arma. These are lads that can score, that can ask questions of a defence, and I believe that they will do that on Sunday in Donegal. The big problem with Arma have had have been in winning positions and defensively ill-disciplined, giving away a freeze, and Mickey Murphy will totally destroy Arma if they're not disciplined. Um, he'll destroy them from the ground, but he'll also destroy them from play. And if Donegal, you know, there are other players off, Forge and Thompson, um, and Langan stepped up the last day, no doubt about it, and they will have to be watched. But do Arma have the defence? I'm not so sure. Um, based on historical evidence, I would say that Arma have struggled defensively. And in short periods of time, within 10 minutes, Armagh have in the past conceded like two or three goals that have wiped them out of National League games, wiped them out of contention in, in big matches. So that's the big question that Armagh will be asked. Do they have the defence? Do they have the discipline um, uh, to track runners and to stop, prevent Donegal, who are probably one of the best running teams there is in the country? Um, but I believe if they get that right, if they get their discipline right, this is a big match. Uh, winner takes all, knockout championship. I think Armagh can do it, and I've pipped them to do it by the minimum, of course. And um, no logical evidence, uh, no equations, but I think they, 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 it's just the year of the summit. 
uh, when has twenty twenty been based on logic? So that's that's my theory. And there's question marks over there in my defence, but there have to be some question marks, Finian, with the Donegal defence because they looked a bit vulnerable against Tyrone. Like Tyrone missed a lot of chances at the end of that game. Yeah, they did. To be fair, yeah, like when you look back at it, I think Tyrone. Tyrone would be kicking themselves, you know, like Tyrone were in one-on-one positions and took points and Peter Hart and Bradley, you know, just like there was goals on there. There was huge goals on there. And obviously, um, like McKenna's one and, um, you know, if that had gone in, it's a different story. We're talking about a different team here now, you know, so it was it was fine margin. So Donegal weren't convincing by any means, you know. Um, I suppose what, what that gives them is it gives them something to work on, which is um, like you know, that, that's worth a thousand training sessions where they can look at these mistakes and tighten it up a bit because they'll need to do that, you know, if they're heading heading for on a collision course with Dublin. So, um, look, Donegal are, 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 are a serious team. They're, they're, they're at the right phase, you know, in their, in, in their development. I think now um, the younger guys, you know, Galway played Donegal in, I think, 17 and we, we, we hammered a lot of that team up in Sligo. Um, you know, they were all just starting that year and, and now they've, you know, they've three or four years under their belt. The likes of Langan and, and these guys, Thompson and these guys, these are all now established. They filled out. You still have, like, you've, you have a very good full back line. Obviously, McManaman, uh, Ombon Gallagher, and he is still there you know, leading. Um, and, and he'll be picking up, you know, he'll be picking up anyone that's dangerous inside, Jamie Clark or whoever. Um, I suppose with Donegal, they've 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 expanded a bit. They've come off the Jim McGuinness era of, of and the Rory Gallagher stuff of of Uber defence. And uh, look, you couldn't get you couldn't fit anything in into that defence for such a long time because it was so packed. But they've you know they've moved into the kicking game. They've pushed up players. They've three four up now at all times. So that that takes a while to get used to as well because you know they're used to you know the likes of Neil would be used to his 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 buddies in front of him filling spaces, filling pockets. And when they're not there, it takes a while to revert back to the pre-McGuinness era where you, you're back winning your 50-50s and stuff again. So, you know, and, and your man wins a couple of balls that wouldn't have won in the McGuinness, in the McGuinness era. So, look, they're, they're evolving. They're, 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 I suppose they're what, they're what we're talking about, Galway, you know, trying to get the balance right there. I think they are getting it right, even though Tyrone stretched them at times. I think they'll be too good for our man. So, I think they'll have, I think, you know, they'll have learned a lot from that Tyrone game. They'll have analysed that video, you know, and they would have been pulling their hair out at the chances Tyrone got um, um, in that game. So I think they'll have analysed it to the hilt. Their matchups will be crucial. You know, who's picking up Jamie Clark? Uh, who's picking up O'Neill? Um, obviously, Rory Grugan, you know, sets up a lot. You know, he's got a wand of a left foot. So um, I, th- I think they'll get their matchups right. And then you're, look, you're looking up front where Michael Murphy come out to the middle. He's kicking ball into McBrearty, Brennan. Probably Oshin Gallen, uh, or Oshin Gallen might start as well as a super footballer. So the firepower there with with Langan and and Thompson as well, you've huge firepower there. And in conditions like this, you want guys to be able to kick kick score on the forty or so to kick those. I give Donegal, you know, a three or a four point cushion on Sunday. Arma, you know, they're creeping. To where they wanted to be, I think Geezer probably thought it it, it happened a bit quicker from. But um, you know, they got up to Division One now. Eventually, yeah, trying it for a couple of years. He's there now. You know, he would want to run in the championship because you know he hasn't progressed in the championship over the over the last couple of years. They've lost a lot in Ulster as well. So um, they'll be up for it. But I just see Donegal as being contenders this year. Not better than Dublin, but 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 you know, they're they're second or third definitely uh, in my eyes. And um, the matchup, Danny, of Michael Murphy is going to be crucial. And Geezer's go to man really seems to be Aiden Falker. Um, so would you expect him to go with kind of like Matty Donnelly went on Michael Murphy and go forward and put Michael Murphy on the back foot? Uh, I'm not sure. Falker, Falker's a lovely footballer. Um, but I'm not sure he would have the physicality for Mickey Murphy. Mickey Murphy. Is I I would I would have said Mickey Murphy is probably the player of my generation, um. Well, now 
I thought Maggie Murphy was was coming in as I was finishing, so I suppose. But I would say Maggie Murphy arguably is one of the been the most influential player for twenty years, twenty years. Now that's including the last decade. That's how good I see Maggie. Probably the best ever Donegal player. Um, I I you know it's hard to say. Maddie Donny done an extremely good job. I felt on Maggie Murphy the last day. But then you take away from Maddie Donnelly's job. And Maddie Donnelly in his own right is a very very strong running footballer. Feet both feet. Um, so again, you know what you lose, what you lose on one hand, um, you kind of, you know, thrown lost that wee bit of, uh, how would you say, punch uh, from Molly Donnelly, um, and you know it didn't do anything for his game. So we might, it's hard to see. Do you sacrifice Grimley for our man, put him on to Michael Murphy, and, and have him track? He's young enough, but again, what do you have the experience? I'm not sure who's going to play. I, I, I think it's a difficult one. You've got big Brandon Donaghy there who's, you know, obviously he, he had the last couple of matches. But again, is this a game where Brandon Donaghy is called on to do a, a job? Um, it's, pro- it's, a, it's a possible uh, question that needs to be asked there. And do you have... But Falker, for me, you know, he's a lovely uh, player. He's a lovely footballer. But um, I'm not so sure if he's going to have the physic- physicality for for Mickey Murphy. So on that route, I'm not I'm not sure how am I going to deal with. It. Do they take turns? That could be a possible route. Um, I it sort of goes against what I, what I would say about uh, Aidan O'Shea though taking turns. I don't quite like it. But again, with with uh, the force of nature that is Michael Murphy, um, how how do you solve that uh, that question? I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But there's no nobody springs to mind. Hit for me that an out and out stopper. Um, the only one I would say is Brandon Donaghy, and, and as I say, Brandon hasn't been getting on, but physically strong enough to uh, to match Murphy in that regard. Um, but again, I don't have to Paul. There's no easy, there's no easy answer to that one. Uh, I'm afraid not when Maggie Murphy's concerned. And I suppose um, Irma have been playing defensive, uh, bringing numbers behind the ball and really breaking a pace, getting the Grugans and the O'Neills onto the ball. Burns. But you feel if they go defensive, it's only going to help Donegal with their long range shooters, Finney, and especially like Michael Langan, Kieran Thompson, Michael Murphy, Ryan McHugh. Yeah, and that yeah, you're right, Paul, and that's where they're that's where Donegal can 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 really do damage. Um they you know, out around that 35 40, they have super shooters, and we saw it the last day, like you know, Langan, like these guys are really, really sharp, they're really accurate from 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 distance you know um again conditions play play a big part in that and if 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 if, if Armagh go into a shell and try and play counter attack in football um you know there's they're going to have to have a high line you know they're going to have to have a high line they're going to have to press that that arc that 40 meter arc they're going to have to really put pressure on the ball out there because you know if if, if Armagh get into a false sense and they have been as Danny says they have been known to switch off at key times in key games and and games they should have won, they've lost because you know of concentration. So like, if they're going to sit off and 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 suck in Donegal, they're going to have to really set up their wall out around that where Donegal are 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 are, are very good at, at at getting scores the the 40, 45 meter and with a with a breeze. If you look, Michael Murphy will kick them all day if you if you hand them hand them ball in the pot if you hand them ball ball in the pocket. So, um. They'll have to come and fresh, and I, I presume Geezer will have a plan. And um, you know, he, he always has a plan, but what that will be, I don't know. He'll want to push Neil McGee. You know, Neil is is, is pushing on now. Has he got the the legs to 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 to, to manage a, a Jamie Clark for seventy minutes? You know, like will they need help back there? You know, are 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 they going to try and put up? Uh, own Bond and, and and Steve McMenamin on the back foot? Those boys like going forward, but you know, when the throw in. Kick it into Clark or whoever's inside. Turn over the bar. Then you know, so, you know, Stephen Campbell straight away there on the back foot. So that's what mcgee has got to look to do. He's got to look to press it from the start. You know, go at these guys in the first five minutes and give those cornerbacks, fullback, you know, defenders uh, something to think about. I will. He's going to have to have matchups for obviously for Murphy, Ryan McHugh. You know, I think Tyrone did that quite well the last day. They nullified the two boys, um, which you know, Donegal's two best players. Um, but it's very hard to stop Michael Murphy having any impact on the game. That's just not going to happen. He's going to have an impact of some sort. Nullifying it is 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 the, is is the best thing you can do because if you stop him in a full forward and put three on him, he'll come out and he'll win a ball. And you know, two or three hand passes that you mightn't see in the game, 
if you watch them later, he, later there, you know, he could, he'll have created one too. Uh, he's that good. And as Danny says, he's definitely the, the best player of the last 20 years. Um, he, he, he's a complete freak. Um, so, so when he's on the pitch, you know, they're going to have to look at him. But Donegal have so much else as well. They've got Ryan McHugh obviously coming at pace. Um, you know, they've got Paul Brennan, obviously, you know, the the, the, the centre-back, very good footballer. So, look, they're, they're there and thereabouts, Johnny Gall. I think Armagh will have too many questions to answer on, on, on Sunday and uh, they don't have enough. You know, Brendan Donny, he could be one, Danny's right, that could come in and do a job, but uh, they need they need, they need need five or six more, I yeah. think. Yeah, listen, Sunday. there's no there's no doubt that the questions that Donny Gall are going to ask are something that Armagh haven't. Um, played against in recent times. Um, this is the biggest question, and it's probably the biggest match that McGinney will have had uh, in in his tenure because he's at that stage where he's five seasons in now, and it's it is make or break time probably in his head as much as it is and and geezers like that he, he will be fiercely competitive and he'll know the time is running out as far as as silver was concerned. But I think he's built a really good culture there in Arma, a really strong culture and what it takes to win. Um, and a great time for, for Kieran McGinney as a manager and a person and again it's one of them panels where you never hear any dissent nobody walking away nobody really feeling bad about and that's always a good sign of a management um, a manager and a management team but the one thing Donny Gall are brilliant at probably one of the best outside of Dublin is the breaking ball Donny Gall hunt a breaking ball like on like a, a team that I haven't seen in a long time they're nearly they're 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 betting on the chance that the keeper, and this is very evident against Tyrone in the league and then Tyrone in the championship, where I was surprised Tyrone never, I suppose, ne- never factored in a wee bit more that this was a key issue. That if you're going to prevent Donny Gall from getting possession, you need to hunt that break ball and you need to be making your way in to get the break ball when the ball is in the air in flight. Um, and Donny Gall, you will watch, they, they won't mark in front of their opposite the player. But they'll take the chance and give them five yards. And if the player, if the defender's going for Nal Morgan says kicking the ball out, and Nal is feels that it's not a eighty percent sure pass, he probably won't most keepers probably won't do it, won't kick it to their to their defender, won't give them that benefit of the doubt. So what Donny Gall do is they bank that this that, that the opposing keeper won't do this and they'll start making their way in for the break ball. So I would say I would see that as a big issue. I would see that as a big issue for any team playing Donegal. If they're not prepared to hunt that break ball, they're immediately, and I would say immediately, going to uh, hand the initiative to the opposite team. So I think that has to be a key area that Armagh and any other teams that want to beat Donegal are going to have to focus on. Absolutely, and I suppose just back to you uh, to start the other Ulster semi-final, Cameron down the grounds half one on Sunday. There must be a real buzz around down this week that they can get back to an Ulster final. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't take much to get a buzz and down now, to be honest. One good result and we're going to win all Ireland. But, uh, no, listen, I think, uh, I'm, you know, watching the first half, God Almighty, Songs of Praise was on um, on the on BBC One. And I would say that a lot of people were tempted to uh, switch it on to Songs of Praise at, at, at one point. It was... It was horrible stuff in the first half. Um, and I think down, uh, listen, we're, we're at the minute, we're not world beaters. Uh, but we know what we have. We have plenty of athleticism. We have plenty, uh, plenty of pace within the squad. Um, but you still don't have that wee bit of experience. Um, you probably have Mooney, uh, Darno Hagen, who would, I would, you know, could get into any other team in the country. Um, but Outside that, you would be struggling. Um, so you have a couple of players, but don't, don't need more than more than two players. Um, I think they can do it. I think they can get through Cavan. Cavan will be six games uh, in a row now each week. You would think with the conditions, with a heavy sod, that down will uh, will get some, you know, get some benefit out of that. And I think uh, with the tails being up from last week's second half, I would say it's the second half only. And what they did is they run a couple of players off the bench as well that made a good impression. I think that Down can can win through the Ulster final. Now, you know, you would fancy your chances against an Armagh team, even if they did come through Donegal. Donegal is going to be, <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to be meeting an experienced Donegal side in the Ulster final 
because they are uh, they are used to winning those big games then but big also championship ties in the final as well. At uh, it's a bit contradictory to say that, for me to say that Armagh might beat Donegal, but I just feel that down against Calvin they can do it. They can do it. Um but again Calvin will be Gavin will be confident as well. They've come through a couple of tough, tough games and probably come against the Monon team and beat them after extra time. So they've shown great character um, and they've done what they had to do to get through Antrim. Not an easy tie by any stretch of the imagination. Antrim, don't, they're no world beaters either, but you know, still a championship match. It's still also a championship, so anything could happen. So uh, Gavin will be confident, but I, I just think down maybe have that legs on them because they've been fresher. And there's a wee bit of pace there that we've seen that we haven't seen in previous years. So I, I would be confident Down can, can get to Nostra Fan. And I suppose with Cavan, you, you can look back at the first round against Monaghan and say it was an unbelievable performance with coming back, but the tactics Monaghan deployed, it was it just wasn't good enough really. And Cavan took their chances. But the last day, like Antrim could have beaten them. Are they in bonus territory really, Finney? Yeah, they are. I, I think, look, they, Monaghan were really shell-shocked. They'll still be shaking up there after that, uh, <laughs> after that loss. Like, it was Monaghan's, it was Monaghan's to lose, you know. Monaghan were cruising in that game. Um, and whatever, whatever they were doing, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, um, you know, Cavan, Cavan got energy from the mistakes that Monaghan made. And, look, Cavan have some good footballers, you know, Garage McKiernan. They've got guys who can punish you. Um, if you give them an inch, and Monaghan gave them more than an inch, so they really said, "Come on, try and beat us." And 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 a team like Cavan will do that, yeah, because they've got good players, you know, um, and, and they're experienced. They were in Division One not so long ago. They were, you know, you know, up there and thereabouts in Division Two. So, you know, I know they're going down this year and they'll be disappointed, but they're, you know, they're they're an experienced enough side. They have a lot, you know, Kieran Brady, these guys. You know, Galligan's a good goalie. They've good foundations. They have a very good manager. So, look, they're in bonus territory. But would you back against them? You know, you know, you probably wouldn't on on Sunday. They'll fancy their chances against Down, even though Down. It's hard to know what Down. You know, you always expect Down. You know, uh, we always expect Down. From 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 this side of the. There's footballers and down, there's no doubt about it. You know, Caelan Mooney and these guys, really, really top footballers. And they're kind of a team that go under the radar. You don't hear much about them. They obviously, you know, you hear, like I hear a lot from, we'd say from our side, you hear a lot about the likes of our man. They get great publicity. Obviously, Tyrone, Donegal, um, you know, even Derry, I suppose, with their tradition. But down of great tradition and down of serious footballers. And if down do get to the final win on Sunday, you know, they'll trouble whoever's there because um you know feel that you know they they you know this team hasn't been there but teams in the past you know teams that Danny were on and, and teams before that have, have, have this great tradition in down so look they have they've really good players you, you, you give them you'd give them the nod on 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 Sunday because of um you know they've they've very good they've a lot more good footballers I think than Cavan and Cavan as you say are in bonus territory Look into the bookies for for anything because you just don't know. Because do Cavan now have a momentum and a you know bulletproof vest that they don't care anymore? They're just looking at it going, sure. Look, <laughs> we were <laughs> goosed in in round one. Uh, you know Antrim, who are one of the lesser lights in in Ulster, put it up to us the last day. We're free falling here, and uh, sure we'll see how we go. We'll we'll take a few lads down with us. So yeah, look, yeah. they'll have a cut, and 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 you know. Paddy Talley will be under no illusions that if you give these boys an inch, they are they're reckless and they'll they'll do anything. You know they've good goalie can kick freeze. You know in 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 a war of attrition, anything can happen. But I give I give definitely give down with the likes of Mooney and you know Hagen and these guys. Um, I I give I give down definitely the nod and um, you know they'll push a Donny Goller and our man in the final as well. And Danny, Darren Reagan obviously wasn't available last week. I'm not sure yep. he's available now this no, week. No, he, 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 Darren, Darren's going to be out for this season. It'll be next season before he makes it which is a blow. But his brother actually stepped up the pit and kicked four points against against uh, Fermanagh last week. And Barry, Barry, uh, Barry Hagen has played all his football, even at club level, inside. Now, he's Barry six foot, six foot one, has played inside. Most of his very accurate. Uh, very quick um, and hasn't played ever in the half forward line really but that 
with the way the game is, where the modern game is, if you're accurate and you have a bit of physicality and a bit of size and you're athletic, half forward line's perfect for him. Um, and I think this is the position for him now at half forward. And he's a real, I suppose it's a real bonus uh, for down. And um, adding, adding, um, adding that wee bit, uh, you know, that wee bit of accuracy to a half forward line because, you know, invariably, a lot of Paddy's teams as well, there's been a lot of workers in that half forward line. But I still go back to the fundamentals of Gaelic football is if you're a half forward, you have to carry a scoring threat. Have to. Um, and I think Bar- Barry has, uh, with the four points the last day, his big challenge now is going to be his consistency. Will he be able to pre- produce it this weekend? Will he be able to produce it week in, week out? And that's when you know you establish yourself at county football. And Finney will tell you, county football is all about being seven, eight out of ten, if you can, every every week. Um, so, um, yeah, O'Hagan, while you'll miss him, you miss Harrison as well, and probably, you know, hasn't hasn't committed this year. But you've all players that have come in, and, and a lot of good young players that's going to come through, and they've got into the right culture. Paddy Talley will have the right culture and has developed the right culture, culture there since last year. So it's, for me, it's a... Uh, it's a bit of a, you know, when I suppose when Kieran took over, when Kieran McGinley, not unlike when he took over Armagh, I was getting the call and seeing what flows there. Paddy's the same, getting and, and seeing how we flow from there. Um, while this year it might be a step too far given the opposition there, um, but I would hope that down every couple of years we should be looking to, every two, three years we should be in an Ulster final competing. Um, and obviously, you, you know, if you're not in, you can't win. So uh, I think, you know, 03, I was in Ulster final in 03. Before that, it was 99, 03, and 2012. That gap, um, even in 2010, we went to the semi final and thrown bitters. Like, it's not good enough. Um, it's not good enough to be those long periods of time without being, being in a provincial final. Um, I still think you need to win a provincial final before you have that experience of winning an All Ireland final. And I think in 2010 that sort of come against us a wee bit, where we didn't have that experience of winning a provincial title and, and winning a final. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say this is as definitely a stepping stone for Down. Um, and we get through Calvin again, it gives them a great opportunity to get to an Ulster final, and that can only be good for us for experience and developing these young lads. So um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, on to the Leinster semi-finals now. Mead going up against Kildare at one o'clock in Crow Park uh, on Sunday. Um, you'd have to think this game could be a possibility of going right down to the wire even seeing penalties because, like, I suppose when you're looking at Kildare, they're going for youth now inside Derek Kerwin and Jimmy Highland uh, inside and then Jordan Morris and Shane Walsh inside for Mead. And I suppose Mead's problem was they couldn't score, but then they scored 7-14 last weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they did, and they were. Um, look, we spoke about me the last couple of weeks, and the, the enigma that is, and and the like in the league. You know, they put up big scores against everyone. Really, they they took it to teams in the league. Didn't get a win, but you know, like they were just. Uh, they'll take a lot of positives from the league up front. I think you know, like they, they put a big score up against um, against Dublin. Um, you know, like they, they they battled against everyone. You know, so like to get their first win, you know, of the year in, in the championship and to put up a big score, I think they'll be very pleased with that. They're heading into the semi final now with a with a um, um, kill there, which is a winnable game for me. You know, they they'll fancy their chances on Sunday, and then they're in a Leinster final. Look, there's no back door around them, but you're prolonging your season. Um, 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 which will kind of feed into you know you're into the middle of November and then you're you're starting back in December again so you know like if they can get over Sunday um, you know and 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 they blooded a few that I wouldn't say blooded a few but they've got a couple of players that you know have come on as you say Morris um, Shane Walsh and these guys and then they've got Kogan and Menton and these guys as well so look there's a lot of footballers in Mead we all know about Mead and you know they have a hard edge as well and their manager is is is, is extremely passionate so. Look, they they didn't want to be the team going a full year been without getting a win, you know, and 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 you saw that on Sunday they were ravenous, so and 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 they did convincingly. So to score seven goals is huge. Uh, that'll give them huge confidence on Sunday. You know, when they get their chances, they'll have they'll have they they'll be going in very confident. You know, with their shooting boots on. So um, I give them I give them the nod on on, on Sunday at Kildare. It's hard to know where Kildare has. 
Jack O'Connor had enough time to put his stamp on the on on Kildare. Probably not yet. You know, he's 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 blooded a few guys, a few guys that were coming anyhow. But he's thrown, they they've been thrown in now, and there seem to be, you know, the leading lights up front. You know, Jimmy Highland looks a look, looks a super player, and then they've got you know the the old guard, you know, Conway and 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 Feedies and these guys as well. So. Um, you know, there's good balance to Kildare. There's always, there's always, you know, there's always uh, 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 an edge about Kildare as well. I think that will be a very good game on Sunday because <coughs> it's a mistake. You know, as I said, both will want to get to a Lens final. Uh, you know, that's the end of the road for either team. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, there's no point in saying any different. So, you know, to get to that final, get a run out against Dublin, and bounce into next year is 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 a huge prize at stake. So, there's a lot of small little prizes in all this as well. So. You know, I know it's knockout and there's no back door, but like in a month's time, we're going to have the All Ireland final, so there's nothing left really anyhow. So for a team, a Kildare or me, to win on 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 Sunday and get to a final, and as I said, you know, skip into next year with with a bit of confidence would would be huge. But I I give the I give the edge to me. I think uh, they just about have have are, are they're better around the middle, um, very good free taker and. Um, yeah, I, I, I think they're just slightly better, and 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 the experience of of, of Division One this year will go will, will go a long way to help them as well. And in this game, uh, Danny, between Brian and Kevin Feely here, are going to be absolutely massive. Ah, it is. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt about that. But I suppose you know those players um can't win it on their own it's very much and you know Meath are going to be i think Meath were relegated weren't they to division one so they didn't i don't think they picked up any points no um, for, so i'd say from they got a draw at the end i think yeah they, they got a draw at the end sorry yeah, well you know for for me that would have been the biggest disappointment of the year if i had been a me the invested in me me supporter me player is that the you know to pick up a solitary point is um you know, obviously nobody wants to finish uh, with, with no points, but, uh, you know, I, I feel that you need to be operating in Division 1. You really need to be consistent to be starting to close the gap. For me, me need to be concentrating on closing that ga- gap to Dublin. And there's no reason with our population that Meath can't do that. It's hard. M- Meath's a complete enigma to me because, you know, the, you would think that they have everything uh, within their artillery to be... Um, to be, you know, a contender in Leinster to, I suppose, reignite that fire of, uh, within Leinster football, and uh, they, you know, just they've moved from management manage, management team to management team without any real solid progress. So, um, it's going to be, you know, it's, Kildare will certainly bring their own bit of flavour on their lovely brand of football. Daniel Flynn, I'm not sure is Flynn committed this year. Um, yeah, he is. He, so again, you've got you've got a game changer there. Uh, I know he hadn't committed last year and stuff, but you have a game changer there. And Jack O'Connor will certainly uh, it'll not be lost on Jack O'Connor what it takes to win an All Ireland because he's been there and how preparation levels were and preparation levels need to be up. And he'll have them. He'll have Jack, Jack O'Connor will have Kildare up for this uh, for this game. And I just fancy I don't know what it is. I fancy Kildare um, in this match uh, probably. Open space of Croke Park, we bit of class up front in Flynn and 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 some of those other guys there. I just think that Kildare could do it. Um, um, again, I, I just think it's going to be obviously just to line out against Dublin and Leinster final seems to be the uh, the ambition for a lot of teams outside of Dublin. Leinster final and giving a good account of yourself at this stage. So, um, but listen, winter football any given day. You just don't know, um, but I think for me, uh, there's progress this last ten years has been slow and stopped. So I just see Kildare here; they could possibly spring a wee surprise there. And um, the other Leinster semi final, Leash taking on Dublin, um, scraped over the line against Longford by two points. So you'd have to think here they're going to get a hide and really fit in. Yeah, I don't. I can't look past Leash on this one, Paul. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it's, <laughs> they have the impetus. Um, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's. I suppose it's, it, Leinster's look. Leinster's a pity for it's a pity for the teams in Leinster because they're the only province that have 
you know, you might have said that about Munster, but Cork would have fancied them ch- their chances anyhow in, in Parky Creek, but Leinster is the only province that has no hope for, there's no hope for any other team, you know, to win it. So, again, they're all playing for, you know, an extra an extra place in the ladder, really. So, um, yeah, look, look, Dublin, look, Dublin look convincing again. They look strong, they look powerful, they went about their business really well. They're, they're big players, you know, stepping up playing He's playing unbelievable football. Um, they've got players that can play anywhere. You know, Kilkenny can play inside as a target man. He can go out and orchestrate as he does. Um, you know, they found a couple of players. Bogler looks a, looks a right good player, very fit. You know, they they've turned. You know, the the the, the new guys. The last couple of years are now established. Scully, Howard, um, like they still have Costco to come in. Paul Mannion hasn't kicked the ball. Then you know the likes of Billy McMahon. Michael Dara, the, the, the list goes on, you know. So, look, I suppose the only thing with Dublin is, is have they found a really, uh, you know, an, another Conor Callahan yet? Hmm, I don't see him in the panel at the minute. Uh, so that's a positive. Um, now, is a Kieran Archer or someone that's coming? Is that are they are they the next one? So, look, it's always interesting to see what's in, what's up there, you know, what's up there, what's coming, because I'm sure there's a bucket loads of. Kieran Kilkenny's coming, you know, over the well, next few years. I hope it's not. Funny, funny you should say that because Kieran Kilkenny for me was outstanding, and I mean outstanding against Westmead. Um, mm. You know, Westmead, the Westmead didn't, you know, they didn't shame themselves uh, for me. No. They, you know, they stuck to their task and and the the you know they played with a bit of vigor and. And stuff like that, and they could have went ultra defensive. They could have pulled everybody in the ball, but they, they showed a lot more ambition. So you know, for Westmead, you have to give them a bit of credit. Um, obviously, Desi Ford, even Jim Gavin in his first year got, uh, you know, I suppose he got caught by Jimmy McGuinness in, in fourteen. So it took him a season to settle things down and and to obviously go on the run that they have. So you know, uh, Desi Ford. This is a nice gimme for Dublin, I think, this year, because you can mm. verbally say, it's a nice gimme for everybody, but you can verbally say if things didn't go Dublin's way that, do you know what, yes, I broke the, the bit of a five in a row or six in a row now uh, if, they, if they won it this year, but it was a COVID year without stadium or without spectators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So do- Dublin are going to dominate for another 10 years, you would think every year, if not every other year. The big thing there is Keegan Kilkenny for me, he just has evolved it so much, whether it be a short ball, a kick pass, a score. He is, um, he's he's the engine with which Dublin play around. And Conal Callaghan even, you know, has been phenomenal. Um, Mannion this last couple of years, all those guys. But Fenton as well in the middle of the field. But if I was looking at two big leaders in that team, I'd be going to Fenton and be going to Kilkenny. If you can negate their influence, like, and we'll have to look to a semi-final and final, Donegal Mayo or whoever seems to be there, you have to get on top of Kieran Kilkenny. You have mm. to get on top of Brian Fenton because if you don't, them boys will will absolutely destroy you. Um, and I just think at the minute Kieran Kilkenny's playing himself. It's all. It's only one game, but I've just seen his form this last 12, 24 months has been fantastic. Um, and yes, there's other players that emerge: Conal Gallagher, Mannion, all those other guys. But for me, the constant has been Kieran Kilkenny. So, yeah. hard to see anybody other than. Um, but if if Leash can get the match up right in them and somebody dogs them for seventy plus minutes, you know they can they can make it a real respectable game. Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a I suppose it, it's been a you know a godsend year for um for 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 Dublin because Dublin were like. Dublin were obviously wrecked, you know, after winning five in a row, you have to think that there was something there. If they had to go back into the league in January, February, March, there was something that was going to say, look, Jesus, you know, we'll take, we have to take the foot off the gas here. We're emotionally wrecked. Then COVID comes along, locks everyone's up, gets the Dublin lads into the, into the cooler, injuries, you know, freshness, hunger back. Like it's just been sent for them really because they've had the break. They, you know, they wouldn't have done the training that other teams have done fitness wise. So it would have taken them a while to get up to speed. So as it always does, but, you know, like surely mentally they would have been a little bit, you know, fatigued, but, but COVID comes along, locks them up, gives them time to rest their bodies, get get back into shape, get fit, you know, get up to the pitch of it. And now they're back at this end of the season and, 
our season and they're and they're hungry, which is mad to say. They're they're probably hungry now for football because they were bored for six months. So it's 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 a killer. And as well as that, as Danny said there, it's a bit of a gimme for Dublin because new manager, you know, you're trying things out. But at the same time, Tyrone are gone, Kerry are gone, they're two big nemesis over the last couple of years. I know Mayo are still there, but but Dublin We'll look at what they've got four games to win in all Ireland. Sure, look, they've been doing that in their sleep over the last number of years. So, oh, you know, it's made for them. Will they beat Leash on Sunday? Of course they will. They'll they'll beat them well. Uh, they'll beat them out the gate, unfortunately. But uh, um, you know, look, it's a bit of experience for Mike Quirk and the boys. Uh, open, so they're getting a bit of press with with Parkinson and these guys over the last while. So they have to look in, internally at what's going on. But. Uh, I think look, Dublin Dublin will win Leinster comfortably and, and uh, hopefully we'll get a we'll get a big game with, with one of the Ulster boys down maybe. As long as hi, as long as Mike Quirk doesn't do an interview with Parkinson, he's he's probably uh, you know, he's probably gonna get another couple of seasons, you know. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're gonna be rushing to Parkinson's door for a while actually. Uh, you know? He might be the he might be the next manager, you never know. <laughs> um, that's all on our, our previous show. Some intriguing games to look forward to. Thanks a million for your time, lads.